We are going to do our Big Class Bible Drills, and we're going to start with Books of the Bible. So how many books are in the Bible? 66. How many books are in the Old Testament? 39. How many books are in the New Testament? 27. Okay, who thinks they can name them? Let's do the Old Testament first. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Abacca, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. Good job. Let's do our New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st and 2nd, 3rd John, Jude, and Revelation. Good job. What are these five things God told Moses? To go to Egypt, to tell Pharaoh, to let my people go. Did Pharaoh let God's people go? No. So how many plagues did God send? Ten. Okay, let's name them. The water turned to blood, the frogs, the lice, the flies, the cattle died. The boils, the hail, the locusts, the darkness, and the firstborn died. Now we're going to do our 12 sons of Jacob or our 12 tribes of Israel. The first one is the one that sounds like a sandwich, as Miss Emily would say. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, Benjamin, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, Asher and Joseph. Good job. Which tribe was the smallest tribe? Benjamin. Which tribe did the priest come from? Levi. And which tribe did Jesus come from? Judah. Now we're going to do our 12 apostles. Peter, Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot. Which one of the 12 betrayed Jesus? Judas Iscariot. How did he betray Jesus? He kissed him on the cheek. Now, is it bad to kiss someone on the cheek? No. Why was it bad when Judas did it? Because it told the Roman soldiers who Jesus was. And what did the Roman soldiers do to Jesus? They crucified him. Good morning, big class. This is Miss Jamie. I'm so excited that I get to share a Bible lesson with you this morning. If you remember from last week, Miss Ashley told you that we were talking, we were taking a small break from our Bible heroes, and we're going to start studying for Bible Bowl. Our Bible Bowl material is found in 2 Kings, and that is in the Old or the New Testament. If you said Old Testament, you're right. 2 Kings is found in the Old Testament. And last week, Miss Ashley told us a story about two men, and their names were Elijah and Elisha. Well, today, our story is about Elisha, too, and he was a prophet. Now, if you remember from what Miss Ashley told you, a prophet is someone that could hear God speak. And in our story today, Elisha helped a lady, and this lady 
was a widow. Now, do you know what a widow is? A widow is someone who has lost their husband and their husband has passed away. Well, she was very upset and she was sad and she went to Elisha, who was a prophet, and asked for help. And she told Elisha that she was a widow and that her husband had passed away and that her husband, when he died, he owed a lot of money to a lot of people, but she didn't have the money to pay them back. Her husband was a good man, and he believed in God, but he just owed a few people some money. And some of those people had came to her and said, I want my money back. One of them was really upset, and he even told her, if you don't pay my money back, I'm going to come and take your sons away, and I'm going to make them my slaves, which means they'd have to stay with them and work for them, and she wouldn't get to see them anymore. And she was really upset, and she went to Elisha, and she said, what can I do? And Elisha had an idea, and he asked her, what do you have in your house? And the lady replied, I really don't have a lot. But I do have a small jar of olive oil, just a small jar. Elisha told the lady that he knew what to do. He said, go around and ask all of your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. Get as many jars as you can find. And once you get the jars, you need to go inside your house and you need to shut the door behind you so that it's just you and your sons. And then you need to pour the oil into the jars and fill each one of them. And once you have it full, you need to lay that jar aside. So the lady left Elisha and she got her sons and they started to collect as many jars as they could find. And then she did exactly like Elisha said. She went home and she closed the door behind her so that it was just her and her sons. And she took the little jar of olive oil and she poured it into the larger jars that she had collected. And she poured and she poured and she poured a little bit more. And the jar was never empty. It just kept pouring and pouring until it completely filled up the larger jar. So she got another a larger bucket. It was even bigger than the last one. And she poured and she poured. And the little, all, the little jar of oil, it never was empty. It just kept flowing and flowing and it never ran out. So the lady was curious and she looked down in the jar, but it was still full of oil. So the lady poured and poured again in all the jars that her and her sons had collected, and she filled them all to the very, very tip top. And when all the jars were full, she turned around to her sons and she said, bring me another one. But they replied, there is not a jar left. They are all full. And then at that time, that's when the little jar stopped flowing and it didn't have any more oil inside of it when they ran out of all of their other larger jars. The lady was so happy and she went back and she told Elisha about how her little jar of oil had filled up so many larger jars and big buckets and that she had lots and lots of oil at, the, at her home. So Elisha told the widow, now I need you to take your oil and I need you to sell it. And once you have that money, you need to pay off your debts. Then you and your sons can live on the money that is left after all of your debts are paid. So the lady did exactly as Elisha had told her. She was so happy and pleased because the money that she made, she was able to pay all of her debts. So that meant that she, her sons would no longer have to become slaves and they wouldn't be taken away from her. And she paid all of the money back that she owed. God looked after the lady and her sons. 
She trusted in him. She did exactly as Elisha had told her. She obeyed everything that he said, and God took care of her, and he provided for her and her sons. Good morning, big class. It's Mr. Sean. And Sadie, and we're going to do a song that we've done already a couple of weeks ago, but since it's a new one, we decided we're going to repeat it so we can remember how it goes. And it's called Love the Lord Your God. Okay, so whenever you do heart, you can make a heart with your hands and soul. That's kind of hard to act out. Mind and then strength. Make your muscles. Let's see your muscles. Okay, here we go. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. I will serve the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. I will serve the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength, with all my With all my mind, with all my strength, I will serve the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. Very good. Now, today's story was about a prophet named Elisha. Miss Jamie told us about him, and the story takes place in 2 Kings. Remember, we're talking about 2 Kings because it's our Bible Bowl book for this year. And so our story last week was so awesome. Sadie, it was all about Elijah and how he got taken up into heaven by a whirlwind. whirlwind. That's right, a whirlwind. It was so awesome story. And then there was Elisha, the prophet. And so all of our stories we're going to talk about now are going to be about Elisha. And Miss Jamie told us this really cool story about Elisha and something he did. He performed a miracle for a lady who was in trouble. Okay, so I've got some questions for you. So last week we played a little game called yes or no. Okay, and so we did sign language. So see if you remember what to do for yes. Remember, this is yes for sign language. And if you think this, what I'm going to tell you is, is wrong, it's, you're going to do no. So you're going to do the two fingers, your thumb. Let me turn it this way so you can see. So that one's no. Okay, so Sadie, show them yes. If you agree with what I'm saying, it's show them no. So I'm going to read a couple of things. If you think that the things that I'm telling you are true, if they're from the Bible, you're going to show me yes. If the things are not true from the Bible, they're not from the Bible, you're going to show me no. Okay, now just like last week, if it's too hard for you to do the sign language, you're going to say yes or no. Okay? Are you ready, Sadie? You think you're going to do good on this game? Okay, let's see if you can do it. Question number one. The lady in the story was a widow. So yes or no? Sadie's thinking yes. Okay, and Sadie, what does a widow mean? It means he does, she does not have any... A husband? Her husband died. That's right. So her husband died. She was a widow. That's right. Question number two. The lady in the story had a lot of money. Did she have a lot of money? Oh, Sadie's going with no. Do you guys think that's a no? Did she have a lot of money? No, she was actually very sad. She didn't have a lot of money. That's why she was talking to Elisha. Question, uh, sentence number three. Um, one of the people she owed money to said he was going to take his her two sons and they were going to become his slaves. Did that happen in the story? That's a yes. That's right. Very good, Sadie. You're doing great. I bet the kids at home are doing great, too. He did. He said he was going to take her two sons and they were going to be his slaves. So she was desperate. She was so sad. So she kept talking to Elisha and she wanted him to help her. Okay. And so Elisha said, well, what do you have in your house? And the lady said, so listen, see if this is true. The lady had a jar of oil in her house. Was that the only thing she had in her house? That was a yes. She had a jar of oil. That was it. Okay. 
Next sentence, number five. Elisha to- told her to borrow bubble gum from her neighbors. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Is that true or not, Sadie? Is that from the Bible? Did Elisha tell her to borrow bubble gum from her neighbors? <laughs> No, that's a no. He did not tell her to borrow bubblegum. What did he tell her to borrow? Or vessels. Vessels or jars. Like Miss Jamie told us in our story, he said, go and gather up all of the vessels and all the jars that you can from all of your neighbors. Go back to your house and shut the door, okay, with her and her two sons. So when they got back, they had all of these vessels and jars, and she poured, here's the next sentence, okay, listen carefully to it. She poured Kool-Aid into the jars. What do you think? Yes or no? <laughs> Sadie's saying no. What's wrong with that one, Sadie? Uh, they didn't have Kool-Aid. They didn't have Kool-Aid back then. Yeah, that's true. So she did not pour Kool-Aid into the jars. What did she pour in the jars? Oil. Oil. Very good. She poured oil into the jars, and she kept pouring and pouring and pouring, and all of these jars were getting filled until her son said, there are no more jars. Okay, last sentence. Elisha told her to sell the oil and pay her debt. Did that happen in the story, Sadie? Elisha told her to sell the oil? He did, and then she was very happy after that because he helped to solve her problem. So who is the prophet in the story that helps the lady? Elisha. And a prophet is a messenger of God. So God tells the prophet, and then the prophet tells the people what God wants them to do. Okay? So Elisha, um, the lady listened to Elisha. Elisha listens to God. Should we listen to God today? Mm-hmm. Yes. And great things can happen. Okay? We'll see you next time. Bye. Lucy, the greatest thing has happened. You'll never guess. What? Did you get a new tire for your bike? Did you get to go to McDonald's for supper tonight? Did your mom cancel your dentist appointment? Tell me, Leroy. None of that stuff. I've got some brand new friends. That's what I'm excited about. They are so cool. They're older than me, and they act really groovy. But even if I am younger than they are, they still want me for their friends. I thought you were my friend, Leroy. Well, you are, but these guys are different. They're in junior high school, and they know, they know lots of cool stuff. Who are they? Do I know them? I might want to be their friend, too. Well, that's uh, Butch and Rocky and Skipper. I've heard of them. You're not really going to hang around and be friends with them, are you? Sure, why not? They all smoke and drink and say awful cuss words, Leroy. They do? I didn't know that. Sure they do. I've heard them. Haven't you? Well, I've just heard them say a few bad things. But that doesn't mean I'm going to act that way. And they've been in trouble with the police. Remember when they broke into the school and messed up the school rooms? Well, I guess I do. But they probably won't ever do that again. If they do, I'll just watch. I won't do what they're doing. I'll just stand back and watch. You're in for big trouble, Leroy. If you start hanging around those guys, you'll get a bad reputation. A what? Is that a cuss word, Lucy? No, of course not. A reputation is what everyone thinks you're like. If you are a friend to those guys, everyone will think you're just like them. But I won't be like them. I'll just be their good friend, that's all. What if they start to smoke and want you to do it with them? I won't. Our Bible school teacher says that's wrong. But what if they start calling you chicken? Well, then I might take one itsy-bitsy little puff. That's just one. That's it. That's it. Just one. That's it. What if they decide to break into a store and want you to help them? Me? Lucy? I'm a Christian. I wouldn't do anything like that. What if they said you had to or you wouldn't be their friend? Well, I'd just take something real little, like some gun. That's all I would take, I promise. That's just what I thought. Hey, Lucy, you and me friends with them, too? I can introduce them. No, I don't. That's not what I was thinking. I was just thinking about what the Bible says about choosing your friends. You're jiving, Lucy. God doesn't care who my friends are. What if my Bible school memory verses says, Evil companionship corrupts good morals. That means if you're a good person and have bad friends, soon you'll start acting bad, too. Really? I don't see how that could happen. Well, you just said you'd take a little puff on a cigarette and steal something if you had to. Isn't that right? I guess. If you took one puff, then the next time you'd take two puffs, and then three, and then four. Before you knew it, you'd be smoking like a choo-choo train. Yuck! I guess you're right this time, Lucy. Another one of my verses was, Be you not unequally yoked together. Yoked? What does an egg yolk have to do with choosing friends? 
It doesn't mean an egg yolk. A yolk is something that puts two things together. It means that if you are a Christian, you need to be yoked up to another Christian. Then you can help each other. Well, I guess I'll egg yolk myself up to you, Lucy. You're a good egg. Those other guys are fried eggs. I shouldn't get myself scrambled up with them. For once, Leroy, you're exactly right. Just like I always say, the yolk is on you. <laughs> uh. <laughs>